Hello and welcome to everyone watching the Written a Melanin channel. Wherever this day may have found you, we are glad that you are here. I am CM Lockhart, better known as Chelsea, and I'm here with LaCase Marie Cousineau. And this is the Written a Melanin chat slash book discussion slash channel slash whatever you want to call it. And we are here to add some melanin to your pages. And this is a book discussion video. We call it a book discussion video because we're here to discuss books. And today we are talking about A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. We were lucky enough to get our hands on an advanced reader copy of this book. It releases on June 2nd. Disclaimer. What we are about to talk about are spoilers for A Song Below Water. So if you have not seen it, please consider this your warning. We are telling you now that this is not a spoiler free video. There will be spoilers. Proceed with caution if you don't want them. That being said, these are our honest opinions. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications. And then after you do that, head over to LaCase's channel so you can do the same because we love her and she's amazing and we want to support. <laughs> yes, yes, great, yeah. fine, okay. Yeah. Yeah? Got it. Okay. <laughs> we're, in, we're in business. We're in business. <laughs> All right, you guys. So now that the obligatory intro is out of the way, let's tell you what this book is about. Um, the description that I'm about to read to you guys is straight from Amazon. So if you're interested, that's where you can actually go pre-order the book. As far as I'm aware, I think you can also get it. You might be able to get it through her website. I can't remember, but I know for a fact that it's on Amazon. Um, the description reads, in a society determined to keep her under lock and key, Tavia must hide her siren powers. Meanwhile, Effie is fighting her own family struggles, pitted against literal demons from her past. Together, these best friends must navigate through the perils of high school's junior year. But everything changes in the aftermath of a siren murder trial that rocks the nation, and Tavia accidentally lets out her magical voice at the worst possible moment. Soon, nothing in Portland, Oregon seems safe. To save themselves from drowning, it's only Tavia and Effie's unbreakable sisterhood that proves to be the strongest magic of all. End quote. So that's the description from the back of the book. <clears throat> um, if it interests you, and again, you don't want spoilers, this would be a good time to head over to Amazon, pick up the book, read it, and then come back to this video. Okay? Yep. So again, we've got all that out the way. So let's like, let's actually talk about this because <laughs> I feel like that's what we need to get into. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about it? Like, I know that we've talked like privately, uh -huh. but on record, how do you feel about this book? <laughs> <laughs> Looking to use it gets me in a court of law. Right. Um, <laughs> I, well, I'll just jump off by saying I was really drawn to the book. Um, it has a beautiful cover. Right. The description you just read is the description uh, that we both saw and we were like, oh wow, this looks great. So I was drawn to the book on premise alone. Um, however, after reading, I'm a little torn. I think it's, you know, a great concept. I think Bethany is a phenomenal writer, but I don't know that the book was necessarily exactly what um, I expect it to be, if that makes sense. So um, it's such it's such a brilliant idea. You know, a lot of us want more magical stories about black people, especially black women, young black women, I mean, into their own and, um, yeah, I, I was really drawn to that story. So, yeah, I I don't know. I feel a little, like, kind of jumbled about it. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of good. There, you know, there are questions that I have, so I'm so excited we're going to get to talk to Bethany. Um, but overall, I do think it's incredibly talented and it's a great idea. Um, so, wait, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I think we are very much on the same page. I mean, we almost always are. But... I think I, I gave this analogy earlier, like off the record, but I, I liked the book in a way that I wasn't expecting to like it. Yes. Um, it's one of those things where the, you know, like, like I said, the analogy I gave earlier where it's like, you know, you're out with your family and you guys say that you're going to go get dessert and you're thinking that you guys are about to go get ice cream and then you walk in to a place and all they serve is pie. And now... <laughs> It's just like, pie is great. You like pie. Yeah. Pie is wonderful. But you thought you were getting ice cream and you're not. 
and it's just very different from what I thought I was getting into. But that's not to say that it was bad. It was just unexpected. Exactly. And the reason I say that is because, let me say this, because like I said, um, we're honest people. These are our honest opinions. Well, I like the book. I feel like the description from Amazon is not necessarily the best description that I would give it. Only oh, because sure. I feel like, kind of like what you said earlier, when we read it, we thought we were getting into one thing, which for better or for worse, we went into the book with expectations about what it was going to be about. And it wasn't necessarily that. Um, I can't speak for you, but for me, I thought it was going to be about mermaids. <laughs> Only because, like, you guys look at, is, which way do I have to look? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, is this what, yeah, look at this, like, amazing cover. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, yeah. They're both below water. They've got the, like, the scales. Yeah. You know, and, you think it's going to be mermaid. Yeah. yeah. And on Amazon, it very plainly references that uh mermaids black mermaids and so yeah. i know for us since we're both attracted to the magical girl genre especially black magical girls especially black girls when they're actually magical <laughs> like we <laughs> are attracted to that and we're so drawn to it for sure. that's what i thought this book was going to be about but for those of you watching this whether you know after the book has come out or beforehand and you really don't care about spoilers whatever you know whatever boat you fall into this book is not about mermaids <laughs> it's just it's not um it's about tavia who is a siren which in this book is not the same as a mermaid um a siren is basically someone who has a power in their voice that can yeah. as far we as we know in the book that can compel someone so get them to do something that you want them to do or appeal to them which makes you seem like something to them um, and throughout the book, Tavia learns of another way to use her, uh, her voice. But sirens are prosecuted in this world. They are not welcome. Nobody really yeah. wants them. They have to go underground. They're, they're dangerous. It's very dangerous if people know that you are a siren. And so yeah. she has to keep um, basically her entire identity under wraps. And a lot of the book is about her struggle with that. And then there's also Effie, who, as they say in the book, she plays a mermaid on TV. So they, I don't know if you guys know that there's this thing called a Renaissance Fair, which I'm like, like Case, I'm pretty sure you could explain it better than I could. But I love, Chelsea's never been, can I just say this? She <laughs> has never been to a Ren Fest. I will make it a point to take her and we will record it for the world to see her first experience. <laughs> but it's um, okay, lovely. Yeah, it will be great. But yeah, the Renfest is a place where it's actually more like, oh, it's like it's like a jumbling of everything. But they have jousting, they have costumes. It's like Lord of the Rings cosplay. <laughs> you know, it's I think it's fun. Lord of the Rings. You know, it's like Lord of the Rings cosplay. But yeah, it's, it's got everything. It's a lot of fun. And there's in the book and in some Renfest I've been to, they have like a mermaid cove, and Effie plays a mermaid at the Renfest. So sorry, go ahead, take it away. Oh, yeah, so um, Effie plays a mermaid. She plays Euphemia the Mer, and that's literally her name, Euphemia the Mer. And um, she's been doing this for year, she, years. And yeah. she gets she really excited. She was little, right? Hmm? Yes, yeah, so she was little. She's oh. been doing it with her mom since, like, I guess she was old enough to do it. And um, she gets excited. It's for two weeks every year. And, um, but this year is a little bit different because. Um, Basically, Effie has this really dry skin. She has a really dry, flaky scalp. And she, um, basically, she struggles with a lot of things, like both externally and because her skin is so dry and her scalp is so flaky and itchy all the time. Um, the only relief she gets is when she is underwater. And so 90% of the time, she's just really insecure about how she looks and are people looking at her dry patches and her cracked skin, her scalp. She's just really insecure. And um, as the book goes along, she starts realizing that she is more than just a normal human girl. And so she tries to figure out 
the other part of the book is her trying to figure out what she is and what's going on with yeah. her body. And um, the story is told in alternating views. So it starts with Tavia's perspective and everything that's going on with her being a siren and things that are going on in her life and who Effie is, her, is to her. And then it yeah. flips and the book is told in Effie's point of view. And, you know, then you get Tavia being, you know, her sister and Effie dealing with her problems, et cetera, et cetera. And the book alternates all the way until the end. So you have a chapter Tavia, a chapter Effie, a chapter Tavia, a chapter Effie, so on and so forth. Um, it's one of those things where, how do I say this? You have to... I don't know embrace it kind of because it's like either it's I don't know I don't want to say it's like liver you either like it or you hate it because that sounds like such an old person analogy but <laughs> that's kind of what it is either you're one of those people who likes books told in multiple perspectives or you're not um personally it doesn't bother me I write my books in multiple perspectives so it didn't bother me yeah. all that much um but like any book that first perspective change just like oh I wasn't expecting this um, but after that, I think it works for the story that's being told. Like, what is your perspective on that? Well, I <laughs> actually, sorry. <laughs> well, um, she just went like this three, three ranges right know, there. I want to like a Mariah Carey run. Um, I personally, uh-huh. and don't stone me, I would have preferred <laughs> I if we had gotten. Sweaty. <laughs> tomatoes. I actually would have preferred one perspective. I'm not against multiple perspectives. I think it works. Like I read your books, it works. Um, Game of Thrones, it works in there. Um, you read Game of Thrones? I, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I've read, I've read excerpts. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what a frustration. But let's not go down that road. No. Um, I think for this story, I would have actually preferred one or the other because mm-hmm. we would get on the cusp of really into what the girls were going through and then it would switch. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, like I would have been so cool with maybe like one book is Tavia and like the next book is Effie or, you know, vice versa because they both had such rich storylines. I mean, Effie, obviously we've mentioned spoilers. Effie's mother has passed. She doesn't yeah. know who her father is, you know? So she, she's got that piece of her identity, not knowing who her father is. She doesn't know what's going on with her body. Um, she doesn't know why her uh, like adopted grandparents, because her mother's parents died, correct? Right. Um, they they are really adamant about her not finding out who her father is. And she's gone to live with Tavia's parents to stay safe and to keep Tavia safe because Tavia is a siren. So, and then you've got like the Renfest and all these other discoveries um, that she's going through. So that to me is a story. And then you've got Tavia, who is a siren. Her family had to flee to California because of a mysterious event that took place when she was 11 um, or something like that. Um, And then, you know, uh, kind of mirroring um, Effie, Tavia doesn't know about her father's mother, who was a siren. Mm -hmm. So she's got that missing piece of her background. And she's dealing with the idea, but not the idea, the reality that sirens, especially, let me, let me, I I should add this. In this book, in this world, only black women are sirens. Right. What, like is what we're learning so it's looked upon as something more dangerous mm-hmm. um in in the in the world of the book during the civil rights movement it came out that a lot of the women working were sirens so mm-hmm. they were imprisoned they were beaten they were killed like there was like a siren trial like like a what? witch trial basically like a witch hunt yeah so um I was like oh my gosh like this is such a, a great idea like I would love to know more about these siren trials why is it only black women um so like watching Tavia go through that so I, I say all that to say I think it would have been so cool if these two books were like if these two stories were split mm-hmm. or you know we weave in and out like one book we even if we weave in and then we come back because there's so much to the mythology that Bethany has created you know taken from the mythology we know in our own world so I didn't hate the alternating um uh perspectives you know perspective thank you forgot mm-hmm. words I didn't mind the alternating perspectives, but I think because of how much in there was, how rich a world she she wove, it would have I would have enjoyed it better. Yeah, I I will agree in some ways, but also like I said, I okay. I enjoyed it. Um, I think for me, I just wanted more 
from each character before the perspective oh, sure. shifted. So yes, and that's not saying that again. I didn't like it. I think maybe yeah. if I don't know. I just like you said. I want it more. There's so much to this world. I want it a lot more. And there's so much going on. And just for me personally, like Effie was my favorite character. So I yeah. loved reading her perspective only because I felt like in a lot of ways, her insecurities, like I could, like being a teenager, I 100% remember that feeling of being like, oh my God, are people looking at me? Like, what are they looking at? Is it because yeah. I look okay or because I look cute or is it because- Everybody you know, knows. <laughs> like She's everybody knows everything. My, I have like a giant <laughs> sign on my forehead that reads, I am not okay, please look at me. Right. Um, so right. I, I liked that part, and I also just liked the Renaissance Fair because, like I said, that, that I was know. completely new to me. So, like reading about it and seeing Effie get so excited about it, I thought that was just—I thought it was nice. I think it's something that made her unique, and I, I really, I just, I enjoyed that aspect of it. And I guess I wanted more of Effie because I feel like. Tavia's life make more sense in the perspective of Effie. Does that make sense? Oh yes, that's a good point. Like it become it becomes a little bit more fleshed out the way that Effie looks into it. That's really true. I will say, I just really quick aside, this is the first time I've seen black characters at the Rin Fest. And I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of black people who love the Rin Fest. So I'm like, I'm like I realize as I'm reading, I'm like, I've never actually read this before. I've never seen these kinds of characters. So I really appreciated that as a uh, Devoted Renfest. Devoted. Um, patron. Devoted. <laughs> I, I love Renfest, but I, I have to give her props for that. I love those. Oh, yeah. And also, so I get, I feel like we've been kind of skirting around the issue. So, in an effort to be 100% real with you guys and whoever is watching this, like, let's just get into the heart of this book because, like, it is for sure about Tavia and Effie and everything that yeah. they're going through. But I think what Bethany does really well is that she touches on a lot of topics that let's just let's we'll say that they're touchy topics for a lot sure. of people. Um, not saying that it needs a um, what is it uh, what is it a content warning? It doesn't. Sure. Need, it's yeah. not that. It's just she puts into words and illustrates things in a way that makes it perfectly clear for anyone to understand what it is like to be a black person in America. And of course, these girls are actually black. However, yep. um, with the magical element in it, it gives it a different level. So um, Tavia being, you know, being a siren right you i for me like i can only say my thoughts you know but when i read it i was like oh by this really illustrates what it's like to have this constant fear all the time of who is really my friend who can i really trust and who is really out here to to get me obviously it's a little yeah. bit different from actually like from actual skin color because you can't hide your yeah. skin color whereas Tavia could hide her voice however mm -hmm. that feeling that she constantly had that anxiety that insecurity that she walked around with every day and e like even the people who claim to be on her side because I um I think we touched on this but or maybe we didn't I don't know um in the book there is this thing called the network and basically it's like an underground railroad for sirens it's people who have come together and they have said hey we are going to protect sirens because the thing about being a siren is you have to use your voice somewhere somehow it's going to be used um that's what makes it so dangerous for a lot of in a, the perspective of a lot of people um that's conjecture though i'm just gonna throw that out there that's just what Chelsea pieced together. Don't take that sure. as, <laughs> as you know, the gospel truth. But um, all that being said, I feel like the way that Bethany wrote this book, she draws, she draws, I can't talk. She draws a lot of parallels between that and being black in America. So I feel like we have to talk about that. Like, I feel like you cannot sure. talk about this book without talking about the heavier topics because to be perfectly clear, while this book is absolutely about black girls who are magical, 
it is about a lot more than that. And Definitely. this is what I call a really heavy read. And what I mean by that is that there's a lot of there's a lot to think about. It makes you think. Mm-hmm. It makes you stop mm-hmm. and pause and be like, okay, let me put this in my own perspective. Let me understand what she's saying, the point that she's trying to make. And oh, right. it's not something that you're just gonna pick up on a Sunday afternoon, kick back with a cup of with a coke, and be like, oh, okay, let me just run through this book really quick. It's not that. Does that make sense? Right. Totally. It's it. It's very heavy. Um, and I admire that she went that route with this um, because there are a lot of parallels. I think we're not a monolith, of course, as black people, but there are commonalities, you know, feeling like you're on the cusp of society, feeling like you have to hide who maybe you are at home with your family, you know, hiding who you are even with your family. Um, I also saw parallels to uh, maybe like an LGBTQ experience, um, experience you know, um, she did a great job of bringing those real life struggles to the forefront with this book. I really appreciate that. So yeah, I totally, I agree and understand. I think it's well done. Agreed. I know I said it and you're agreeing with me, but I'm agreeing with you agreeing with me. So. Nothing narcissistic about what we just did. (laughs) (laughs) We're like high fiving. (laughs) But um. I feel like for me, the the best part of this book was actually the writing that Bethany did because her style is yeah. so, it's so unique and it's so, I don't know, it, it's so easily wove into the lighter stuff with Tavia and Effie, back into the heavier stuff, back into the lighter stuff. So like, there are boys and there are crushes and there are things like and like little high school romances and I call them little because when you're in high school in the context of this story they are little like these are not deep-seated i'm truly in love with you romances these are you look kind of cute we talk we make eye contact you look at me i look away i look back that kind of relationship you know good old days yeah right (laughs) (laughs) so it's it's the cute stuff and It it goes from that to the the heavier stuff and like i said this is full of spoilers so um, one of the things for me that kind of show, like showed this is how Effie goes to the pool because she swims all the time. Um, one of the reasons yep. why she swims so much is because she plays a mermaid and yep. mermaids have to be underwater. They have to know how to swim. And so in the off season, so that she doesn't get rusty and, you know, be a bad mermaid, she practices her breathing techniques and she swims and she practices staying underwater and, you know, staying in character, yada, yada, yada. And at the pool, there's this cute boy named Wallace, and he just seems to always be there, and he watches her swim. Sometimes they talk. A lot of times they don't. But um, on this particular day, they go, they swim together, they hang out, and then they, was it this one? But they leave, and they go get something to eat. And it's really, yeah. it's really sweet. It's, it's really cute. It's really soft. Yeah. But then literally the next chapter, they're going to a protest together to talk about. We don't, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was gonna say we don't get a chance to be with that moment. Um, it's just like bam. Yeah. Protest. And like I said, it's the the protest is told from Tavia's perspective because um, the protest is about um, obvious, not obviously, unfortunately, it's one of those things that you know in the black community you have a lot of children and black boys and men who are shot and killed for absolutely no reason and people have protests to bring you know awareness to that but in the book while that's happening it's also a protest against the silence the collaring of sirens because basically in the book what the police will do if you're a siren and they find out you're a siren is they give you a collar that basically silences your voice um 90 percent. i think there's one siren who wears it voluntarily but the rest of them are forced to wear it and um one of the people that tavia really likes she comes out as a siren and she's at the protest so the protest while also for this boy and his family is also for um or against you know violence against sirens and awareness and things like that so 
they go, her and Effie and some of their friends from school, they go to the protest. And, you know, that's when the book kind of starts to shift a little bit because this is one of the turning points. But yeah. that's why I say, like, it goes from really light things because Effie and Wallace are there. And um, Wallace volunteers to go to the protest with Effie. And I don't know. I feel like that's one of those things where it's just like, he likes her. He very much clearly likes her. But yeah. it's, it's also a very heavy thing that they're dealing with together. And there are other things that, you know, play go into play. But I'm not trying to just fill you guys with all the spoilers of the book yeah. it's just yeah. one of those things that <laughs> there's so much yeah I feel like it's worth mentioning you know mm -hmm. absolutely it's a big part of the book um gosh there's so many levels to that <laughs> I this, this has nothing to do with a review I just I just think about um the protests it really took me back to like what was going on in Ferguson and like even like what's going on now you know it's like the complete opposite you know protesting books are protesting for like a loss of life protesting against loss of life so it was really this is a heavy book <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's very really heavy. heavy i'm just thinking like you know you're feeling all these emotions um, but i think it's good to have those heavy discussions everything to be talking about. yeah, yeah. It, like that's the great thing about literature we have so sorry go ahead I know I was just agreeing with you. I'm like, yeah, you like you absolutely need these levels because I feel like it's a, while it's important to talk about it and while it's important to voice it, it's also one of those things that conversations get forgotten. But you will always have this. You will always have a book. You will always have the written word, and this yeah. is something that will carry over for a long time. And I feel like it's also something that because it's in a story like this and it's told the way that it is told. It is going to get people talking and it is going to get people thinking and it is going to bring to the forefront of your mind what it is that um not even for just a moment for the aspect of this particular part of the conversation even taking away the magical element of it of Tavia being a siren and Effie being what she is you know you bring into the conversation what it's like to be these girls to have to be in a place like Portland, Oregon, which, and these are not my words, it's in the book that it's one of the, it's wider than the West, rest of America. And <laughs> you have these white girls in a place filled with people who look nothing like them trying to deal and face and be a voice against this injustice that they are having yeah. to deal with and live with every day. And you can't just overlook it. You see what I'm saying? And... I just I think I think it's really well done because I think a lot of people have tried to do what Bethany has accomplished with the song Below Water, but yep. no one has I'm not gonna say done it well. I'm gonna say that it's difficult to do it well and Hardly. it's easier to completely screw it up and make people angry than it is yeah. to be able to do what I think her book has done and actually start a conversation about it. You exactly. see what I'm saying? Yeah absolutely it forced us to have a conversation yeah leading up to this review you know like getting our perspectives because you know our experiences are different while you know we have a lot of similar you know beliefs and likes we're drawn to similar things but um it's really cool to find that common ground play like, um through a book like this yeah i i think it's really good i think it's probably on the older age for ya you know what i mean i would oh, yeah. definitely market it toward older ya or even adult I don't um, know that's something that like maybe a 12 year old could handle. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I would definitely, I feel like this is a book for someone who is becoming self-aware. Either you are yes. already self-aware or you're becoming self-aware. And for sure. I know this is a really weird analogy, but for those of you church goers, if you are, if you have, if you are not raised in a church, then you may not get this analogy. But it's like when you're little and you go to church with your parents and you listen to the pastor and you have no idea what he's saying. It just goes in one ear, out the other, goes way over your head. And then you hit a certain age where you start actually listening and what he's saying starts to make sense. Or she, I don't know. For me, it was a he. But, you know, it yeah. starts to make sense. It starts to click and you start to sure. realize that you understand what he's saying and that wasn't your experience before. I feel like yeah. this book is for that same type of experience with people who are realizing that 
the world is not fair that there are different rules that you know if you are a person of color or specifically you're black in america there are different set of rules that you have to play by that you have to be aware of there are different things that you have to keep an eye out for you have to be mindful if that makes sense and totally I, i feel like this book is for that kid at that point who is starting to realize that I am different, that the rules are different for me. And they start to become, they're at that point where, they, again, like I said, they are becoming self-aware. And this, I feel like this is a really, either a really good segue or a really good illustration, whichever point it's at. Um, I definitely would not give it to a 12 year old unless you just have a really woke 12 year old. Um, <laughs> but even like, so, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. But, um, cause it's, it's interesting. Cause, and the reason I say that, which is so interesting because I've read other YA books, which I'm like, which have a lot more themes of romance in it that I would say, okay, yeah, it's totally fine for a younger age to read. But this one, I think there's like one kiss <laughs> in the entire book and it's yeah, towards that's a the good end. Point. And the reason I say that it's probably not meant for a younger audience is just because I feel like what makes this book special are the heavier themes because it's not just this really light, light book, light and fluffy that you're just gonna run through. And I feel like if you don't pick up on those aspects of it, the book is gonna hit differently and with that in mind, if you're not going to pick up on it, I feel like you should probably wait until the person that you're giving it to can pick up on it, if that makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but that's just me and my personal opinion. Obviously, it also depends on who you're recommending it to, because I know some kids who are like way more mature <laughs> than sure. others. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. But all that being said, um... Like I said, I really enjoyed this book. I I don't know. I'm still sitting with it. I'm still marinating on it. Okay? Yes. Let me say that. Like I'm, I'm I don't say that. I don't want to say that to say that I didn't like the book because that's not true. I, yeah. I I'm still sitting yeah. with it. Like I'm still marinating on it. I'm still thinking about it. I'm just like, oh, like what? Just like what? <laughs> I'm there's still sitting here. Like it. what did I read? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's so much to it. You have to be willing to sit with it, like you said. Yeah. Um, it's like really, Thanksgiving like, dinner. It. There we go. It is. It's like yeah. Okay, dinner. I got a good meal. Stuff. Can't breathe. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I need to be rolled it. away from the table. I need to be rolled. <laughs> yeah, all the emotions. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. There's a lot to it. I think it's it's why I need more of the... I, I got to give it to like the YA genre. The authors in that genre are willing to look at these with a critical eye and then translate it in such a way that younger people um, absolutely and it might have been easier for us to see it because we've lived but um i uh i really think this is such a great introduction like you said people who are becoming more aware getting going a little bit deeper absolutely and i love that bethany was bold enough to do it because yeah um, oh yeah i feel like and again i can't speak for anyone else i'm black and i write and I know that sometimes it's easier to shy away from certain themes because in the back of your mind, you're just like, I don't want to write a book like this. I don't want to add in these hard things. I don't want to have to touch on it. I just want to create an escape. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just, I, re I recognize the need for both sides of the coin. Like, for sure. You need yeah. authors. I want to say like us, where we write escapes, you know? Yeah. Not to say that we erase the culture of what it is to be black in America, but the books that we write are not focused on that. However, I feel like A Song Below Water is on the other side of that coin. It's not meant to hide from that aspect of the culture. It's not meant to shy away from it. It's not meant to make it easier for you to swallow. It's meant to make you stare at it straight in the face and see it, recognize it, acknowledge it. And I feel like, okay, and to be fair, I've never actually read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I wanted to read it. I had it on hold at my library and then they pulled the book and it's no longer available. Oh, no. So... <laughs> I haven't been able to. It's been on my TBR for the longest, but I have a gist of what it's about. 
Um, and I feel like this book, based on my preconceptions of what the hate you give is about, belongs yeah. in a conversation with that book, along Absolutely. with Dear Martin by Nick Stone, along with, you know, what is it? not Tuesday, well, along with Tuesday Isn't Coming, along yes. with those books. It, it Yes. It's a good book and it's fiction. However, it it hits, <laughs> you know. Agreed, agreed. So definitely hits. It hits. Uh, it's it's well done. I'm proud of her. I don't know. We haven't met her yet, but I'm proud of her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Bethany. If you're watching this in the future, we are so glad that you wrote this book. Like, yeah. thank sure. you, and thank you for allowing us to read it. And Absolutely. We are excited to talk to you because, like I said, at the time of recording this, we will be talking to Bethany tomorrow. By the time you actually watch this, it may be we will have. <laughs> already out. So, again, the timeline is kind of screwy, but whatever. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, that being said, I think that's really all we can say for this book. I know we said that it was going to be full of spoilers. Um, we tried not to spoil it too much. I don't think we did too bad with it. Um, if you want to and you like it, like us, and I hope you do because you've watched this video for like 30 minutes now. Um, <laughs> I had a point. Oh my God. I was going to be so smooth like, with it too. Oh, Dang it. girl, no. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Alright, also on the channel is our talk with Bethany. We will be interviewing her and talking to her more in depth about a song below water, about her writing process, about what it's like on her writing journey. All those good questions that we love to interrogate authors with because I feel like interrogate is such a nice word and that's my big word for today. Let me use it. Hey, and I'm here for it. That's it for this video, you guys. If you liked it, please tap the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, then head over to LaCase's channel from LaCase Marie. Subscribe to her as well. Turn on the notifications because she is awesome and she is amazing and you're definitely going to want to check out her channel and show her some love. And while you're still here because you're listening to me, go ahead and go down to the comments. Say hi, say hello, tell us that we look great because we cute or whatever. <laughs> You can drop a little brown melanin heart in the chat if you have nothing else to say. We love that too. And yeah, that's it. That's it for real, for real. Thank you guys so much for watching. You're amazing. And until next time, we hope your days are lovely and your books are interesting. Bye.